So it's already been over two months since the Lenovo Legion Go launch, and I have to say this device feels so much better now than it did at launch because the BIOS and driver updates have really turned things around for it, and it just feels more like a complete product now. And in this video, we'll be going over the build quality, specifically mine and how it's held up over time. We'll talk more about the beautiful screen, do some more benchmarking, but this time I actually wanted to compare the native resolutions of the Legion Go, which are 800p, 1200p, and 1600p, so it's non-native resolutions of 720p, 900p, and 1080p, and see what the difference is like, so I'm pretty excited about this. And since the BIOS and Legion Space UI have gone some pretty great updates, we're gonna have to get into that as well, but without further ado, let's get straight into it. So going into the build quality first, in the time that I've owned mine, it's held up extremely well. And honestly, the Legion Go is probably the most premium feeling handheld that I've held and I own like four handhelds. The metal-like material on the back coupled with the really nice feeling face buttons and smooth feeling hall effect sticks make this thing feel like a pretty high quality device. Detaching the controllers from the railing system has worked flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with that over time. And I also wanted to mention that the railing system on the Legion Go feels a lot more sturdy than on the Nintendo Switch. Like, you know that bobble that happens when you're using a Nintendo Switch, well that bobble is a lot less noticeable here in the Legion Go because the railing system is pretty dang good on this thing and it holds it in place and to make it bobble I actually actively have to try to make it like wiggle and stuff, that's when I feel it. But like in my everyday use, I don't really notice that much of a wiggle. And I know some people had a concern about that, but at least on my unit and my everyday use, I really don't notice that much of a wiggle at all. And cosmetically, it's held up pretty great as well. I try to take care of it like all my other devices. So as long as you take care of it, it should keep its stealthy, stylish black look. So in build quality, I would say I'm pretty satisfied with the Legion Go. Ergonomically, the Legion Go is actually quite comfortable for me. I know it gives off this look of being bulky and like chunky and just uncomfortable to hold, but the chunky controllers are sculpted almost perfectly for my hands to grip them. My only complaint, I guess, when it comes to the ergonomics is that on the bottom corners, it can sort of dig into the palms of your hands, depending on the way you're holding it. But overall, I do think it's pretty comfortable to hold. The weight hasn't been a concern for me either. I know it's a relatively heavy device. It weighs about 852 grams. For reference, the alloy weighs about 608 grams. So it is pretty heavy, but like I said, I don't really notice it at all, at least when holding it with two hands. But when I'm holding it with one hand and I'm trying to use the touch controls, that is when my hand will get fatigued. The screen has been one of my favorite things about this handheld it's just completely different from all my other handhelds due to its size. And when I'm playing a game, I really find myself being pulled in and pretty much immersed because it's just so wide, there's so much screen, it's a pretty unique panel in my opinion. Also when you're playing like a high refresh rate game like I don't know, Titanfall 2 or MW3, it just looks awesome. The gameplay is so fluid. Playing Forza Horizon 5 at 1200p looks absolutely stunning on this device and since it's a pretty optimized game, you can play it at a relatively high refresh rate even at this resolution. And speaking of resolution, that's one of the pros of the Legion Go is that it does have that high resolution of 1600p. Now you will be limited to what games will actually run at this resolution. But like I always say, these are computers at the end of the day, you can do other things with it, like watch YouTube, surf the web, do other computer things at that high resolution. So it is pretty neat to have. Legion Space, as I mentioned earlier, has received some updates that have not only made it better in terms of features, but also just the way it looks and how smooth it is. So let's go over some of the more important features, starting off with probably one of the biggest ones, that being the dead zone fix. So at the beginning of the Legion goes released, the dead zones were not great, everybody knows that by now. But now we can adjust the dead zones for each stick to however you'd like by going into the controller section and the settings and by using the two sliders at the bottom, you can adjust the dead zones to your liking so it's really easy and convenient. And we can also adjust the joystick sensitivity for both sticks as well so that's pretty neat. We also have the ability to turn on and off the vibration or like the haptic feedback of the touchpad. I actually like to keep this on, I find that the haptic feedback is pretty satisfying. Okay one thing that I'm excited for and I probably shouldn't be is that now we can actually switch the Legion Space button and the Quick Settings button down here to the Menu and View buttons, making it feel a lot more natural to pause and use the select button in game. Because we're like used to having those buttons somewhere in this vicinity on most handhelds, so this was much needed in my opinion. There's also a new shortcut added that allows you to quickly access the Xbox Game Bar by pressing the Legion Space button and right stick at the same time. So that's most of the new important features added so far. I still think Legion Space is behind Armory Crate on the Ally and definitely SteamOS on the deck, but it has come a long way since launch and it feels less buggy and just overall it feels smoother. Going into the BIOS, we've gotten some features that allow us to tweak the performance 
performance of this handheld, such as being able to select our VRAM limit from as low as three gigabytes of VRAM to eight gigabytes of VRAM, which is important because some games are VRAM hungry and require more than four gigabytes of VRAM to run smoothly without constant frame spikes. We can also change the speed of the RAM from 7,500 mega transfers per second to a slower 6,400 mega transfers per second. And obviously if you want the best performance, I would just stick with 7,500 mega transfers per second. And lastly, we can change the CPU core count from as low as four cores to eight cores. And again, if you want the best performance, I would just enable all eight cores. Okay, now let's move on to some benchmarking, my favorite part. And remember we're doing non-native resolutions versus native resolutions. And the first game we have up is GTA 5. We're using the jet scene part of the in-game benchmark tool and we're running normal settings here. And on the left, we have 720p, a non-native resolution of the Legion Go, and we're averaging about 130 to 133 frames, which is beyond playable. And our 1% low is decent as well at 64 FPS. And at 800p, which is the lowest native resolution of Legion Go, we're averaging about 121 to 124 frames. So there is a pretty decent difference between these two resolutions, almost about a 10 frame difference. Moving to the middle resolutions, at 900p, we're averaging about 126 to 128 frames, so not a big loss in performance compared to 720p, and that's why I love 900p as a resolution. At 1200p, we're averaging about 105 to 106 frames, so there is a pretty big loss in performance when compared to 900p, but this is still a very playable frame rate, which is honestly quite impressive for this resolution, and I have to say it looks really nice. Moving on to the highest resolutions, at 1080p, we're getting an FPS average from about 120 to 122 frames, so that's really good for this resolution, and our 1% low isn't too bad either. And at 1600p, we're averaging a playable frame rate of about 80 to 82. But if you look at the frame time graph, there are some pretty rough moments. And our 1% low is looking pretty poor as well for this frame rate sitting at about 30 to 31 FPS. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, we're running the game at the high preset and we're using the in-game benchmark tool for this test as well. And at the end of the benchmark, we got an FPS average of 143 frames for 720p, which is beyond playable. And at 800p, we do lose about five frames, but this doesn't really mean much because it's within the margin of error. Moving on to the mid tier resolutions, the game looks even better, especially at 1200p. It's looking pretty crispy. And at the end of this benchmark, we get an FPS average of 137 frames per second for 900p. For 1200p, we ended this benchmark with an average of 97 frames, which isn't bad, but there is a difference of about 40 frames, which in a competitive game like this, this could mean the difference between you winning a gunfight or not, which I might be over exaggerating, but there is a pretty big difference. But even at this resolution, it's still very playable. Going into the highest resolutions at 1080p, we ended this test with an average of 118 frames. Once again, very playable. And at 1600p, we take a huge dip in performance, dropping us all the way down to an average of 61 frames per second. But our 1% low is actually pretty good for this frame rate. But honestly, this is pretty good performance for this resolution. I was actually pretty surprised at the results. Rainbow Six Siege is a really well optimized game. Next up, we got one of my favorite racing games, Forza Horizon 5, and we're using the low preset here here at the lowest resolutions and we're using the in-game benchmark tool for this test. And towards the end of the test, we got an average of 98 frames per second for 720p, so really good here. And at 800p, we get an average of 96 FPS, so really no difference right here. Both are pretty much identical. And at the mid-tier resolutions, the game is looking a bit crispier. And at 900p, we ended up getting an average FPS of 88, so about a loss of 10 frames from 720p. And at 1200p, we got an average of 71 FPS, so a much bigger loss in performance compared to 900p. We lost about 25 frames from 800p. It's still pretty a very playable frame rate, it's just that we did lose quite a bit of performance at 1200p. At the highest resolutions, the game is looking really nice, and at 1080p, we ended up getting an average of 77 frames per second, so once again, a very playable frame rate. And at 1600p, we missed the 60 FPS mark as we get an average of 52 FPS, but this is still quite an impressive number for this high resolution playing on integrated graphics. Forza Horizon 5 is another one of those really well optimized games that can take advantage of the Legion Go's power. Up next is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this test, we're running the median preset at the lowest resolutions, and at the end of the test, at 720p we got an average of 61 frames and at 800p we got an average of 59 frames so really no difference here it's within the margin of error. Upping the resolution to 900p at the end of the test we got an average of 53 frames per second and 44 fps for 1200p so a decent difference of about 9 to 10 frames between these two resolutions. Moving on to the highest resolutions at the end of the test we got an fps average of 46 frames for 1080p and for 1600p we got an average of 31 fps. When compared to 1080p it is a huge loss in performance but I would still say this is quite impressive once again for this resolution on integrated graphics, you could possibly go for a 30 FPS experience at this resolution. All right, up next is another Ubisoft title, Far Cry 6. And for the graphical settings, we're running the lowest resolutions here at the medium preset with some upscaling using FSR 1.0 set to balance. And once again, we're using the in-game benchmark tool for this test. And at the end of 
the test, we got an average of 79 FPS for 720p. And for 800p, we ended up getting an average of 74 FPS. Moving into the middle resolutions, for 900p, we got an average of 73 frames per second. So we lost like five frames. So not much of a difference from 900p because this is within the margin of error. And for 1200p, surprisingly, we're still staying above 60 FPS as we're averaging 63 frames per second here. So that is pretty impressive thanks to upscaling. Moving on to 1080p and 1600p, for 1080p, we got an average of 68 frames and the game's looking pretty dang good at this resolution. And for 1600p, we got an average of 50 FPS, which is honestly quite impressive once again for this resolution. Moving on to the battery, I know some of you guys want a more detailed review of the battery. And I think the best way to go about this is to just, well, load up some games and see how fast the battery drains. So for the first game we'll start with is Witcher 3, which is a more demanding game. And for this test, I have the resolution set to 1600p and the TDP set to 15 watts. And the battery percentage was at 74%. And I ran a 15 minute timer. And at the end of the 15 minutes, the battery drains to 53%. So that is pretty bad in my opinion. Next game is Forza Horizon 5. The resolution I used is 1600p once again. And for this test, we started off with 76% battery and I did the same 15 watt TDP and set a 15 minute timer again and at the end of the 15 minutes the battery drained to about 53% once again. Next up I wanted to see if an indie game would slow down the battery drain so I loaded up Death's Door using 1600p again and 15 watt TDP. We started this test with 75% battery and at the end of the 15 minutes the battery drained to 53% once again. So it was pretty surprising seeing that pretty much all three games had the same results at 1600p using 15 watt TDP but yeah overall the battery life on the Legion Go is just not great. So in conclusion Conclusion, as time has gone on, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of Legion Go. I know in my original honest review of this device, I was not super fond of it, mainly because the software side of the device was just simply not up to par, especially when you compared it to its competitors at the time. And Armory Crate on the Ally was far ahead of Legion Space when it launched with the Ally. But Lenovo's hard work in patching up this device and bringing it up to speed is paying off now because I'm really enjoying this thing right now. And if you want to see how the Legion Go and Ally go head to head in 20 different games, I recently did some benchmarking with these two devices, which you can watch right here.